All right, folks, since April, 9,400 migrants uh, have been shipped from Texas and Arizona to D.C. The Department of Defense de declined Mayor Miro Bowser's request twice for National Guard assistance, and now she's declared a public emergency in, a, in establishing an Office of Migrant Services to help those arriving in the city. Initial $10 million to stand up the new office and support organizations working in the field. We will seek reimbursement from FEMA for all eligible uh, services. Uh, and we have experience working with FEMA on the reimbursement of eligible services. And I'll say a little bit more about what uh, we think FEMA could do uh, to make sure that states and cities like ours aren't left holding the bag. And so in order to create uh, this new offices, I am declaring a public emergency. Uh, and this public emergency will give my administration the following authority uh, to establish a migrant services office with the DHS and direct the department to provide services and supports to migrants arriving from the southern border states, authorize the city administrator and the chief financial officer to set aside and spend funds uh, to respond to the emergency, to authorize the chief procurement officer uh, to respond to the emergency, and uh, directs the city administrator and the department to establish new programs that expand or modify existing programs in response to the emergency. I will also be sending emergency legislation to the council that codifies the new migrant services provisions. Uh, so we look forward to beginning uh, this next chapter in our response. Uh, we recognize that we don't know and we have no control on all that is coming towards the district. Um, but we do uh, have control on how we make sure that our values are present in all that we do and the hard work that we have done uh, to build our system of human services for D.C. residents uh, is not broken. Now, you might be asking, why is this happening? It's because Republican governors are assholes. Yeah, I said it. And Texas Governor Greg Abbott is one of them, my home state. This idiot has spent $12 million dollars of taxpayer funds to ship migrants to New York City, Chicago, D.C., and other places. Yes, what a colossal waste of money. And guess who's quiet? All of these so-called fiscal conservatives. This is the same idiot governor who spent millions of dollars having the National Guard inspect vehicles on the border. But guess what? They couldn't inspect the vehicles because once they put the tags on them, uh, they couldn't open them to their rather destination. So you know what they were expecting? Tires, wheel frames, that was it. This is the idiot who's the governor. And that's why Beto O'Rourke should be elected governor and beat this fool. Talk about your validity, talk about the grid, but this is a perfect example, a total waste of money. Uh, joining us right now to talk about uh, what's going on is uh, attorney uh, Maria uh, Pia uh, I'm sorry, hopefully I got that correct from Corpus Christi, Texas. Ronald uh, Claude, Director of Policy and Advocacy with the Black Alliance for Just Immigration. Uh, I, I got to start with you, uh, Attorney Maria. I mean, look, let's just be, I mean, again, this is the Texas governor being an idiot, and these other Republican governors, and they think it's cute to put migrants on buses and ship them to what they call Democratic cities and say, fine, y'all deal with them. Yes. Uh, so what happens is, um, before COVID, normally when a person would uh, be crossing the border and they didn't have the documents needed to be in the United States, they would be deported, removed. But uh, if they express fear of returning to their country, then the government could not remove that person. And they would go through a process to determine if that person um, could apply for asylum. So it would be there would be a preliminary interview, whether it was a reasonable fear interview or, or a credible fear interview. And if they pass that interview, then they would be eligible to proceed with an asylum application in immigration court. Now, President Trump then issued the MPP program, and that put a big stop in uh, immigrants being able to apply for asylum inside the United States. 
And so most people were uh, being held in Mexico to process their application there. And then more recently during COVID, the CDC issued what we call Title 42 order that allowed DHS to turn everyone around, not even let them apply for asylum because of the uh, COVID pandemic. And so when Biden decided to end Title 42, and again, this is all in litigation, um, President, I mean, Governor Abbott decided, okay, if we're gonna get immigrants in Texas crossing the border and applying for asylum. He didn't want those people waiting for their asylum process in Texas and decided to put them off. What he says is he's offering them, he's asking, would you like to go on a bus somewhere else? And so he is, uh, those that are agreeing to that are being transferred to those states that you mentioned. The thing here that uh, just makes uh, no sense whatsoever, Ronald, is that here you have the mayor of D.C. having to pull aside $10 million. But Texas already spent $12 million. I mean, it's literally a waste of money. Yeah, and again, uh, this is part of... Uh, well, hold on, Maria, one second. Ronald, go ahead. Yeah, no, ab ab absolutely. Uh, you're, you're spot on. It is a waste of money. And quite frankly, as we're hearing about the fact that, you know, certain migrants aren't getting the protections they need in terms of refuge or even food or, you know, being sent to the cities where they don't know anyone, I think in particular, you're looking at it and you're like, well, surely there must be a better and more efficient way um, to welcome migrants um, into this country. Maria? Absolutely. I agree with you, Ronald. And again, this is Abbott trying to uh, assert however little power he has over immigration laws, because that is very clear that that is the sole jurisdiction of the federal government. And so he, since Texas doesn't have any enforcement power over immigration laws, he's simply passing, um, transferring the immigrants to other states. So what? This just continues. Uh, no one can are just put through hell, uh, put on buses and then ship to cities with nothing and, and pretty much, oh, drop them off. Like, okay, city, your problem. Um, yeah. I, oh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, uh, yeah. No, uh, Ronald first, then, then Maria, go ahead. Thank you. Yes, um, ex exactly. I mean, I think what we're seeing now is that you're seeing a lot of community members and community uh, rooted organizations rallying to stand in the gap. But I think, again, we're we're all just looking, especially at the government and making calls to government and for, for philanthropy to support the work that needs to be done in order to make sure these folks are, um, are treated with the dignity and respect that they deserve. Because, uh, you know, crossing the southern border is no easy task. And in fact, DHS has accounted 700 and 50 migrants have actually died in the process. And that's only for what DHS can account for. So it's just that we know black migrants, particularly and in indigen indigenous people, as well as brown migrants, are going to be the ones most impacted um, by this and to be sent um, to cities where they don't even know anyone or speak any of the language um, is just it's it's extremely cruel. So I think what we we're thinking of what happens next is us to really hold this gov the government account because you know I think what we're also looking at is that uh, clearly right now we're, there's requests to increase police funding. Um, there was uh, there's more there's more funding for the Ukrainian war uh, support for the Ukrainian refugees and I think what we're really asking is that that same level of assistance needs to also be provided in this scenario as well. Maria. I agree. I mean, what 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 this group of immigrants in particular needs is the help of their community and, more importantly, immigration lawyers that can assist them through the complex uh, asylum process that they're starting when they come to the United States and ask for asylum. Well, it's just illogical that uh, the mayor of D.C. has to deal with this, the mayor of New York and Chicago, all because you have these idiot governors in Arizona and Texas, uh, these Republicans uh, who are being spiteful. Uh, folks, we appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right. Bring, bring my panel uh, in right now. Kayla Bethea, communication strategist, Michael Imhotep, host, African History Network show, Matt Manning, civil rights attorney. Matt, I'll start with you. You're there in Texas. I mean, this is literally a waste of money. That's what it is. It's a waste of money. Uh, and, and Governor Greg Abbott is an absolute idiot and an ass for what he's doing.
Yeah, and this is basically an expenditure of public money for a campaign purpose. Greg Abbott is worried about, you know, his electability and reelectability against Beto O'Rourke, and he's doing anything he can to try to inflame and further, uh, you know, galvanize the Republican base here. So anything that, you know, involves the border or anything that they think is is incendiary and scares people, particularly uh, middle-aged white people who are the base of the, the Republican Party, especially here in Texas, they're going to do. So that's what this comes down to. It's all a political stunt, the same kind of stuff we see uh, DeSantis doing in Florida. And, you know, I think your point was really well stated earlier that, you know, it's sad that Muriel Bowser and the good people of D.C. have to spend $10 million to respond to something that Greg Abbott has already wasted my tax dollars to the tune of $12 million on. Uh, it's absurd. And it is purely to make a political point. And that political point is the borders are unsecured or, or whatever. But instead of treating these people like humans and taking care of them here while they await um, their asylum proceedings, instead he's shipping them off so he can make a political point. And it's a waste of money, and I think you're exactly right uh, characterizing him that way. Uh, it's, a, it's a great point there, uh, Michael, that uh, Matt makes. It's really campaign. I mean, he's using taxpayer money uh, to right. make political points. It has nothing to do with public policy in Texas. No, it's about him desperately trying to show that he's tough enough on immigration, and it's just silly. It's silly. Well, you started out talking about how, I forgot how you phrased it, Roland, uh, he's stupid, things like this. Uh, no, I say, uh, I say he's an asshole. He's a, Right, right. He used that <laughs> That's term. what I said. Yeah. yeah, okay. Right, right. And, and, and he's forget. wasting taxpayer money. That's what he's doing. Let's not forget, he's a white supremacist. And this is what we're dealing with. This Texas used to be part of Mexico. So, so, you, so you're going to ship people who come across the border from Mexico, and Texas used to be part of Mexico, and the U.S. got Texas be, because they made a colony out of Texas, instigated a war with Mexico, and then, Tex, and then you had the Texas Revolution of 1836. And then when Texas comes into the Union, as, uh, it comes into the Union as a state in 1845, they come in as a slave-holding state the year before the Mexican-American but War started. But, but here's the this, deal, though. But, this, but even with all of that, at the end of the day, you're, getting, you're wasting money. You're, you're wasting you're, I mean, money. It's 12 million in accounting. And again, I understand. And, and actually, the cost is several hundred million when he wasted right. using National Guard on the border. I, I agree. And then when he delayed those uh, vehicles coming in and inspected them, some of those vehicles were semi-trucks that were bringing supplies and food and things like this to the U.S., and they, and they were delayed as well. But at the end of the day, this is an example of why elections have consequences. And, and, and the governor is one of the most strategic, important positions. You cannot have somebody who's a lunatic, who's the governor of a huge state, one of the largest states in the union. He should have been spending that $12 million, Roland, to eliminate rape. Didn't he say he was going to eliminate rape in the state of Texas? How's that going? What initiative do you have for that? So this jackass needs to be voted out of office. We, we, people need to support Beto O'Rourke. I don't care your race, creed, color, things like this. That, uh, uh, th that governor, Abbott, is dangerous. He needs to be voted out of office, period. Uh, it is November 2022. It's extremely frustrating, Kelly, to have to sit here again, uh, li listen to the so-called fiscal conservatives talk about wasting taxpayer money, and they are all quiet about this. Mm -hmm. They're all real silent. But beyond that, Roland, I, and I haven't really heard this angle, how is this not some level of human trafficking? How is this not a crime against humanity such th that, you know, internationally someone can intervene, like international law can intervene and say, like, hey, this is human trafficking, because it's not like these people have a choice. They are, against their will, going from jurisdiction to jurisdiction with no support, no help, on the taxpayer's dime. So when you look at it from that angle, Abbott is literally using taxpayer dollars for human trafficking purposes. And that's just sick. That is absolutely sick, only for political gain, only for you to make a point and use human beings as political pawns in a moot point that is immigrants coming into this country. It's going to happen. And frankly, Texas has the land. D.C. doesn't. New York doesn't. The other metropolitan cities up north do not. And it's not like 
Texas doesn't benefit from migrants in their economy. So you're taking away from your economy, you're taking taxpayer dollars, you're committing human trafficking offenses, all for the sake of getting back at a Democrat who doesn't give two dams about you? Like, th that's a sick individual. Period. Yep, and that's why I, I hope folks in Texas uh, elect Beto O'Rourke because uh, what we're dealing with uh, is just sheer ignorance and uh, for, from Greg, Greg Abbott. For, for, there's nothing about guns after Uvalde uh, and the mass shootings in this state. Uh, the electric grid is totally screwed up. Uh, that's mm -hmm. And people died uh, with the freeze there, did nothing there as well. And so uh, it's time for him to get defeated, as well as that idiot Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick. I mean, we truly have mm -hmm. two of the dumbest people as the governor Lieutenant Governor in all 50 states uh, in Texas, and that's the crap that we're actually dealing with. All right, folks, back to our Mark unfiltered video in just one moment. Can you believe the nerve of these Republicans? They only want to block progress for our community. They talk about cutting Medicare and Social Security. They played politics with veterans' health care. They voted against the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act and funding for our HBCUs and against lowering prescription drug costs for our seniors. These Republicans keep trying hard to stand in the way, but President Biden, Vice President Harris, and Democrats won't let them. They are delivering for us. The Democratic National Committee is responsible for the content of this advertising. When you talk about blackness, and what happens in black culture. We are about covering these things that matter to us, uh, speaking to our issues and concerns. This is a genuine people-powered movement. There's a lot of stuff that we're not getting. You get it, and you spread the word. We wish to plead our own cause to long have others spoken for us. We cannot tell our own story if we can't pay for it. This is about uh, covering us. Invest in black-owned media. Your dollars matter. We don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff. So please support us in what we do, folks. We want to hit 2,000 people, $50 this month, raise $100,000. We're behind 100000 so we want to hit that. Y'all money makes this possible. Checks and money orders go to PO Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037 0196. The cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zelle is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. 